We continue with the AQL tutorial series and before I get started I want to remind listeners and viewers that uh, you can save these searches uh, so you don't have to retype them over all over again and you can have it on your quick searches as you do uh, with other searches in Curator. You can use those searches as you do with others. Uh, uh, you can use that as part of a report and save the results in a CVS file or any other format. You can use it as part of your rules and as we've shown in another video you can even invoke those AQL from a RESTful API. Uh, many people suggested that I should put the AQL commands in the description of the video so you have a place uh, to do copy-paste from. We're going to be doing a lot of, uh, of searches today on flows. Uh, we did uh, in the previous uh, series we have shown it with logs so let's do it today with um, some flows. And all these use cases that this showing was shown in this video has been produced by our friend Mutas uh, from IBM Poland. So thank Mutas for providing these use cases. So here I am in the rules section. Uh, in, in offenses, I click on the rules, and I want to point out. Uh, the, that as part of the standard rules in, in Curator, there are some policies that allows you to have uh, uh, rules that will, for example, can create and fire an offense. And let's, uh, if we see this one, this is the one that will detect slow going, outgoing uh, type of traffic from the same source IP to the same destination IP. Uh, you know, this is uh, strange. Why is this is uh, something that can easily be used for a rule? But let's actually see this in the context of AQL searches. So let's go into the network activity and fire our first uh, search. And here what we can see is that we uh, want uh, to count the unique uh, days and months that uh, that the traffic has been going from the same source IP to the same destination IP. Uh, show me the amount of traffic being sent in megabytes, and that's what we divided by that number, which is 1024 square, uh, and and uh, and, and see the total number of flows. So when we actually uh, search for that particular command, this is the type of results that we actually get you know, quite a few events of that uh, type of traffic. We can slightly modify that search by adding the unique count, source IP as we see it in there, to get the, the traffic that is going to the same destination IP. So when we click search on that one, we get a uh, small number of results, but uh, similar. These are the ones that go to that unique source IP. So there are a couple of uh, destination IPs. Which of these are kind of uh, suspicious? I would like to know, you know, which of them might, might be potentially bad. So we can actually tap onto the X-Force uh, for this. And actually, as we shown in previous, uh, in, in the previous tutorial, we can use in AQL queries uh, to the X4. So let's modify that search uh, to get the X4 data in it. So as we see, we had modified the search to include that X4 IP category. And when we click on the search, what we get is a subset of that data and with the one that the X4 has uh, information from us. And notice that these two addresses, the 111 uh, to Indonesia is a command and control botnet type of site. And this one uh, from Croatia is as well. And so, hmm, we can actually um, initiate a, a more detailed investigation on those. And we can actually see in here that uh, on the transmitted data that we have more than uh, 
than uh, two megabytes. But if we wanted to modify the search and say, well, I, I want to see, you know, data. Let's say that you get a much larger set of, uh, of this data and you would like to uh, filter that for only stuff that is greater than uh, two megabytes. So let's actually modify the search to do that. And we can see it here in which we actually specify and that we wanted to group it uh, when the data transmitted is uh, greater than uh, uh, actually uh, one gigabyte in this uh, in this case uh, one megabyte sorry and you know here we see the same uh, the time of result but just to show you that you can actually limit this in the amount of data being uh, transmitted. So let's say that we want to investigate that first event, that event to uh, Indonesia on that uh, data transmitted, which actually is uh, rather high, right? Uh, let's modify our SQL search to actually do that. And we do that by precisely specifying that out of all that data, we just want that destination IP 111.68.116.106. So when we click search in here, what we get it uh, are all those traffic. Notice that they are being going to port 80 and 8080, and they seems to be different type of uh, source IP uh, source port. Probably trying to disguise something in here. Notice that he, we get the nicely formatted uh, transmitted data here on this on this field. And if we want to investigate the traffic going to Croatia, well, we do the same thing, but we just put the that uh, 91 uh, address instead of the 111. So let's actually click search and see what we get. And this is uh, the you know similar to before. Sorry, similar than before. Uh, this is the source IP random type of port, but these all go to that strange 9999 destination port. And actually, you can click on any one of those uh, on those events and actually see the type of rules that do matching in here. Uh, and you see, for example, this one: suspicious flow, suspicious event, only directional flow. I mean, these are the things that you can actually use uh, to complement your rules and to have. Uh, rules that will, for example, generate an offense uh, when these type of incidents uh, happen.